thing with life, often in ways that you would not expect. By the Middle Ages, the church had come to embrace every aspect of life. I'm Richard Taylor. I write books about the meaning of Britain's churches. I believe we've forgotten how to read the language of these buildings. But if we care to look, we can connect directly with our ancestors' deepest hopes and fears. I'll be looking at medieval wall paintings, carvings, angels and demons to discover just how the church came to permeate everyday life so completely. Churches originally served to shelter the altar, the focal point for the most important Christian ceremony, the Eucharist. The early churches were often simple and crudely built. But the medieval period was a golden age of church construction. Building techniques and artistry soared to new levels. From the 13th to 15th centuries, impressively decorated churches like this rose up all over Britain. The interiors were recreating heaven on earth. And what better way to evoke that heavenly world than with angels? Many churches have angels in them, but none are quite like Blytheborough. The angels here are hovering over the heads of the congregation. Everyone is as different as the people underneath them, their faces, their hands, their hairstyles. Originally, these would have been painted in green and black and covered in gold leaf. And the impact, especially for people who didn't see highly decorated images in their day-to-day -day lives, must have been overwhelming. I love the way their wings are thrown apart and on every one there's a crown, a golden crown. I wonder if people would have picked their favourite angel back then and felt that they were watching over them. This glimpse of heaven inside the church contrasted with the difficult and devilish world outside. Life was seen as a battleground between